scrapbookers and painters. Today I'm doing this rooster. Um, this is the photograph that I have gone from and I don't love it. Uh, she's no Bessie the cow, which is the one I did last week, but it was good practice for me. Um, I think I can, uh, I think I, <laughs> I prefer cows to, um, I'm still not happy with all of it, but I think I prefer painting cows to painting roosters, but this was a good stretch because it was something that I hadn't painted before. Um, so I've used acrylics and I walk you through the entire process from background to sketch to painting and I do my videos in real time so that means there's a lot of, um, there's a few interruptions, a lot of rambling. Not all of the time is well spent. I don't speed up my videos though, just so that you can see exactly how long everything is taking. And also because I want you to think of me as like your buddy. <laughs> so maybe we're together in a room painting at the same time, or maybe you're working on something different. But this is, um, this is the painting that we're going to make today. So grab your paints and let's start painting. Hey scrapbookers and painters, so it's Friday night, and Friday night is going to become my art night. So I bought um, a long skinny canvas, I have my some brushes, and what was like a pencil holder, but has become um, somewhere to keep brushes, but also to mix up paints, and I have... Um, an All Animals magazine, which is, I think it has something to do with PETA, but it had a lot of animal photos, so I might be using one of these photos to um, use as the inspiration for my painting. This was my sketch for the cow painting that I did last week, and then I just also used it as a place to test out paints. And then I also used it, here's another angle of a cow. I don't think you can see that very good. Um, let me just, oopsies, I'll go over that just a little bit so you can just see how rough my sketches are. I'm going to just go over it in a, um, a Sharpie marker. Hold on just a second. I'm trying to find one that is black. <laughs> I have like every other color under the sun. So I may I normally do scrapbooking videos and well I couldn't find a black one but this is basically like the approximate sketch so I think you'll be able to see this so this was kind of this one of the angles that I did last week and I just sketched it out onto um, a piece of paper because that way I could make sure that I was spacing out everything you know just how I wanted to and this one was like taken at a real funny camera angle and the cow had like a bell and I felt like I wasn't getting the bell perfect but not that it all needs to be perfect I just wasn't getting it how I wanted it. I think I found this picture. It's probably a picture that I found on Pinterest. And so that was my very rough sketch. Can you see that? And that's about all I really need to get started on the painting. So we'll do that kind of a rough sketch with a, a something that we find in here. Okay, show you what else I got in terms of supplies. So, a lot less <laughs> than scrapbooking supplies. I have another brush. I have these little palette thingies that I get at, um, you know, the craft store. No big deal. They cost, you know, less than a dollar. I did go to the, the art store, or the craft store, but I went to the art section of the craft store, and I bought... Some more brushes. So let's open those up. And these are these are for acrylics. 
which is what I'm mainly going to be using. Ta-da! And one of the little protector things came off. So I'll try to put that back on. Just one of the detail brushes. Okay. And then I bought some Liquitex Heavy Gloss Gel, which I have never tried, so that's going to be fun. My son wanted to know how calligraphy worked, so that's a, another lesson for another day. And then the other thing I got, oh, were palette knives. So I'm not sure that I'm going to be totally getting into those, but let's open them up. And these were probably $3 for the two of them. There was also a set of like six of them, and I just decided to start with, so this is like all of my brushes in this thing. And as I paint, I tend to get super messy and everything kind of bleeds onto everything else. That's kind of fine with me. Okay, now the next thing I have is, dun, 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 is I have this old canvas that's been painted over several times and um, my daughter painted on it last week. <laughs> So it's like a dark green, which I don't envision myself using, so the first thing I'll probably do is paint over this. And can you hear her screaming? <laughs> oh yeah, and then I have Bucket O Paint. So I have a bunch of different um, paints, not all of them are acrylic paints, but most of them are. I've got a Sharpie marker in here. Just a bunch of random paints that I've had. Some of them for a super long time, some of them not so long. Some gesso that hasn't been opened yet. Just a variety. But let's start by playing with that gloss. So the first thing I wanna do is, <laughs> first thing I wanna do is go get something to put underneath all this. So I don't make a huge mess, um, but instead of doing that, yeah, let me do that. I think I know what I, I have a piece of paper that I think is going to work really nicely. It's just like a paper roll that I got at Ikea. I think that's going to be a nice place to um, put, it, like instead of a newspaper, it'll be kind of like that. Okay, hold on just a sec. Okay, ready? So I have this canvas that was already painted on. If you're starting with a blank canvas, which is what I would recommend, um, all you want to do is kind of decide between, because um, I'm going to do a portrait of an animal, so I either want the background to be all green or all blue, like either grass or sky. Um, I guess you could do brown or some kind of earth color if you wanted to, but I think Going with blue or green is going to be a great choice. Now this stuff I have never used before, so it will be interesting. And I think what I'm going to do, so I'm just kind of peeling this oily stuff off of it. I want to use a bigger brush. I'm not going to go with the palette right away, I'm just going to go with this brush here. and. I think that's about what I used last time. Um, I just want something to gloop the paint on. So I'm going to just gloop some of that on. Can you see how much? And then the other thing that I'm going to do, maybe just a little bit more. <laughs> I have never used this before, so this will be fun. But this is going to give my background texture and yeah it's also going to give like one thing that you can do if you're if you're going to make a portrait of an animal I should have like a paper towel handy but I don't but I'm just going to carry on anyways um so if you were going to do say we're going to do this cow which I don't think I'm going to do but maybe we will but then you could leave the part where the cow is going to go blank, so you could kind of draw that off and then just paint all around it. But I just think it's easier to paint the entire canvas 
And so let's start doing that. The other thing that I'm going to mix with this, so first off, I've never used this. <laughs> Second off, I'm going to um, to add to it right away. And I'm going to what I'm going to add is um, Texture Magic Delta. It's called it's Eucalyptus is the color. And this is how I started last week. This is just dimensional paint. And I'm just going to glue that down there. So that's what it looks like so far. I actually think now would be a great time to use this palette knife, y'all. Y'all. Um, yeah, <laughs> and the cow sketch is going to be the kind of the, the place where just stuff gets thrown and whatever. So I just want to mix this up so that I have this paste kind of. So just mixing, mixing, mixing. It's almost like mixing wasabi into your soy sauce. <laughs> Not exactly, but it reminds me of that a little bit. Okay, so I make my scrapbooking videos in real time. So I think that I'm going to be making these videos in real time too. What I want to start with is a lighter green at the top, so I want it to be even lighter than that. So I'm going to add, this is called sap green, and I think hopefully that's going to make this into kind of a ye more yellow green. See how it's kind of a bluish green? I don't know. Let's see. Oh, that looks just pretty green. Let's save that. Not. I think that's what this is here. <laughs> Let's try something else. We also have Chinese white. Uh, that could work. I also have a Viridian. That looks a little darker. Now, I don't know if these W's mean it's watercolor or what. <laughs> Welcome to my painting course. I have no idea what I'm talking about. I don't know. But I mixed, whether this is acrylic or the W is just, I don't know if it is or not, but... Boy, that sure doesn't look white. Is Chinese white red? Let's just pour some of that over here. Looks awfully red. I was not expecting that. Um, I was not expecting that. No, I wasn't. I'm just looking for white. I think I'm actually just going to use some of this craft white that last week... It was all dried out, so I just added a tiny bit of this odorless turpenoid. Odorless turpenoid. <laughs> yeah, it's older than dirt. <laughs> um, just trying to see if there's a date on here. Yeah, I'm pretty sure this is way older than any of my children. It's super duper old. I think I've had it since I was young. And I'm old. Old now. Okay, so now we're just adding some white to the gloopy gloopy. It's not exactly what I had in mind. It's okay though. I kind of thought it would be a little bit more yellow, but okay, I don't think I want to use palette knife for that. I think I'm going to use the the brush and what the way that I did it last week is I just kind of I brushed it like X's. So I just did lots and lots of X's. See I already spilled some there. So I basically just want some brush strokes back here. I really don't like this color. Blah. But I do want to cover up that background, so and just 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 go X X X X, and you can you wouldn't have to do that. I just think it's a good way to get a lot of random brush strokes on there. It doesn't have to be X's. Now that's my first 
kind of layer and then we're gonna keep going darker with this green as we go down so I'm just starting out with the lightest color and then we'll go down but as I'm doing this I want to make sure that I'm painting around the edge yep so that way if you hang it on the wall like it looks finished from the side Can you see? I hope you can see. So I do my process videos real different than a lot of people because once I've gotten into something and we're going to be here for a while, I'm going to start telling you about what I've watched on TV and, you know, I'm like the person sitting across the room from you. In scrapbooking, it's really, the, scrapbooking started out with having lots of crops which is where like typically a bunch of women would get together to all work together so just think of me as your painting buddy <laughs> so now i'm looking for in my over here. i'm looking for in whoops in my paint um yeah i just do want to add a little bit of yellow to this whole deal oops that hasn't I haven't used that yet. Oops, that's more than I, I didn't intend to use that much. So as I'm picking the paints out, when I'm, I'm not um, putting them back in the bin, so that way if I need to go back to them, they're right there in handy. Well, wow, this one doesn't even have a cap. Oh, I've been keeping my paints in an atrocious manner. Yes, that's true. Okay, here's some blue if I need blue. Um, this is acrylic. This is hooker's green. <laughs> that looks like really like what that color is. Um, what else we got? We have more permanent green. What's this color? Emerald green. Let's try a little bit of this. Okay, now there's a fly in my paint. Can you see that? <laughs> I don't know if you can or not. So it's Friday night and my husband usually um, plays in a band on Friday night. So I'm in this position of, I can't really go anywhere, but, cause my kids are here, but um, yeah, so I have to be like kind of available, but nobody, they actually painted with me last week, but they don't really want to hang out with me, you know? They just, I just have to be here, so I can't really go out to, okay, this is way more of a contrast than I expected, but it's also, this was the kind of the color that I was looking for more initially, so this is too much of a, <laughs> this, I just got my hair done, and this is kind of like, what happened with my hair. Too much of a contrast, so I'm just gonna lightly cover that top up because that was kind of the color I was after anyways. What I like about acrylic paint is, I mean, there's no mistakes because look, there's this color and I'm totally painting it over. <laughs> so it's very forgiving and you can change your mind and start over and I'm sure you're not supposed to paint a canvas as many times as this because the green wasn't the first color my daughter painted it brown like a way long time ago <laughs> like it was pretty and then she um she just kept painting and what one of her preschool teachers told me is the trick to getting a really good painting out of a preschooler is to know when to take the canvas away from them. So, <laughs> yeah, that's... So I just want to kind of make sure I'm covering up all that old green and then moving it down on the sides. Yeah, that needs to be over. And then probably as I do my next layer, 
not do as much of a contrast. <laughs> Let's see how that works. But I like the way the brush strokes look. I really enjoy a lot of brush stroke to, when I look at art. Like I love looking at Van Gogh because he had a lot of brush strokes. I really dig that. Okay, now it's not as much of a contrast. I still feel like I want to bring that down a little bit more. I'm not being... I was much more successful with this last week. I'm not sure why. So I just kind of want to... What I really should do is have a system where... Let's try that the next go-round. Where I keep some of that lighter color so I can kind of bring it down a little bit more, but it's okay. I w I'll say that and then I won't do it. Watch. So, still kind of just doing random brush strokes, no big whoop. So that's what it looks like. Okay. Okay, and let us, I feel like I want to add some more of this gloopy stuff. Let's add some more texture magic, because I'm kind of running out of, um, the whole gel medium stuff over here, and then gonna I really should have a rag I don't and so this is what starts to happen with this bin is I'll put this brush with the color just gonna put it right in there and then I'm gonna go back to a, one of these things a palette just to kind of mix up that color a little bit and really I should have stuck it into the um, the medium, I don't really want to contaminate my medium with another color. Let's add a little bit more of this emerald green, which is really like a Kermit the Frog kind of a green. And then just a teensy weensy of sap green, which is, yeah, a little bit darker. So let's just see how that mixes up. And I want to kind of keep that, this little mixture, a little bit contained so that if I need to bring some of the lighter color back in, I still have some of it over here. Yeah, I've never really, oh, I think I'm going to love using a palette knife though. Okay, I'm just I've never really, like, my grandfather is the, oh, I love it. Yeah, I love it. Um, I'm, what I want to do, though, is keep the background pretty consistent. So I was just playing there. I'm going to go back to that brush and just um, do that whole same process as I was doing before with those X's. next layer down. So I'm basically doing a monochromatic ombre kind of an effect, which if you're from the scrapbooking world, like ombre has been a, well if you're from any world, I think ombre has been a trend for the last couple years. I went to the hairdresser today and she said she was doing ombre with my hair because I kind of got too blonde and then wanted to go back a little darker and so instead of just coloring the whole head she was like I'm gonna do so she called them low lights into my hair but have it be a whole gradual I don't know and then she put some blonde highlights in the front which I thought would look good, but look like kind of crazy in my opinion and my kid's opinion. And then my husband came home and he was like, oh, I like it. <laughs> he like really liked the, um, 
the blonde, and he's like, you should get a tattoo now. <laughs> like, slow down, buddy. <laughs> I'm a, I really think it looks, makes me look like my friend from high school, Mindy Frankel's mother, had like a streak in the front of her hair. Like, she had real dark hair, but then had like a blonde gray kind of a streak in the front. And that's how I feel like I look like. <laughs> um, but my husband seems to really like it. The hairdresser said if I didn't like it, I could go back and she would darken the blonde streaks in the front up for me um, at no extra charge. So I'm on the fence. Perhaps I'll show you at some point what my hair looks like. Okay, now I have my base. So I think I'm pretty done with this portion of the uh... so there we go so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do the sketch while this is drying so I just want to take this and then put it somewhere where it can dry it's um, lighter green at the top can you see I hope you can it goes light to dark so now I just want to let that dry and now I'm going to do my sketch. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. And it really, I want, <laughs> kind of want to reiterate, if you've ever watched my scrapbooking videos, you'll know that I just don't plan ahead. So I turn on the record button and then start talking and recording. <laughs> so, and I, I do that because I think a lot of times when you're watching somebody's process, if they have it all planned out in advance, it gives you a really pretty false impression of how long it's going to take. So this I'm just going to leave and I don't know, it's probably not the best thing to do, but that's what I'm doing. <laughs> and so I'm just kind of, I'm just going to put it over there. Okay, now I probably also should have gotten out my some sketching pencils. Yeah, see, not prepared. <laughs> it's okay. No big whoop. I'm kind of um, on the fence as to whether just using a regular pencil or I think my charcoal drawing pencils are downstairs, so I don't think I'm going to be using those. Yeah, I'm just going to get some regular pencils, I think. And I'm also going to grab, this might shake you a bit, sorry about that if it does, a magic eraser. I like these magic rubs. These, so I just have some regular pencils. I'm going to just put my paints off to the side. Now I need to pick a photo that I'm going to use for my sketch. I liked the one on the front. That's definitely a possibility. Except it doesn't look very friendly. There are some cows in here. And um, I did a cow last week. That was like my first back to painting painting. Um, I know there's a pig in here. There's another rooster. I think the rooster could be fun. Although I've never really done a rooster before. When I was young, I used to, like a kid, I was obsessed with horses. So I used to draw horses all the time. Let's see. Sorry, if you if you're all about efficiency, I'm probably not the um there's the pig. Do I like the pig? No, his eyes are tiny. I don't think I really enjoy that. I think I like the rooster better. Now it's just a matter of which rooster do I like better? This one or this one? And I think I'm going to pick this one just because you can see more of the rooster. So there we go. 
so where do I want to start? I usually like to start with the eyeball. So I've never drawn a rooster eyeball before. Can you see this? I hope you can. It's weird and kind of ugly. So there's the rooster eyeball. And then Then kind of what you gotta do is see like how big all of that is in comparison with the rest of it. <laughs> I've never drawn a rooster before. This is weird. Cause it's got like this big year just thing coming up. Okay, and what I can instantly see is I probably haven't left myself enough space for its um, this bit here. So let me just change to the other side here. So that's how far I got. At this point, I'm just kind of practicing the sketch. So let's move the eyeball down a little bit. So what I kind of want to be sketching is like, this is gonna be my, my canvas. So then it, you can kind of, like most of the action is going to be going on in this section, in this upper right hand section. So let's just do, there's my freaky eyeball, and then there's kind of like where the beak is, that goes, okay, so I'm just doing the whole big rough sketch. Now I want to make sure I'm getting this part. I still feel like I don't have enough space for this. I also think it was going to be way harder to draw a rooster than I imagined. I hope you can see all of this action. I think you can. Yeah. <laughs> okay, then we kind of have this whole oh, the feathers. Yeah. Okay. Do we like it? I don't really like it. <laughs> Um, I also feel like I want more white space about this rooster. Let's just try to, let me, let me sketch it one more time before I sketch it onto the, um, onto the, this time I'm just going to start with the, the shape of the head.
I don't love it. I'm wondering if I should just draw a cow. What do you think? I feel like I'm kind of committed to this stupid rooster at this point. Alright, let's see if that, um, if my canvas is anywhere near dry. We'll be right back. Okay, so I'm still deciding whether I want to do this rooster or whether it would be more fun to do a cow. <laughs> um, the cow was really easy. It really was. I feel like I could still do it. I mean, it was super easy. Uh, cow or rooster, cow or rooster. I just don't know. Or this cow. This cow is like, yeah, I think we're going to be doing this cow. <laughs> um, nothing like switching gears, which is fine. You can totally switch gears. This was the one I had, I saw it on Pinterest, and it was like, let me just see. I, will, I think cows are, see, I just don't know roosters that well. <laughs> I feel like, but I know cat, like I can, I feel like I can draw a cow like pretty easy, you know, like that's going to be its horns, it's going to have some big pretty ears, and then this cow is going to have a big old nose, and some... Actually, the ears go more like that. <sighs> it's going to be a cow. Hold on. Okay, I'm back. I'm going to do the rooster after all. <sighs> yeah. I'm not super pleased with my ability to draw a rooster, though. So... I'm going to do this thing that my grandpa used to do. I'm just going to rip it out. Okay. And then I'm going to fold it to the way that I want it to look. And I think that's going to be easier to draw, like to get the proportions better. So it's probably going to end somewhere about, I want it to be about the same kind of a rectangle. All right. So now this is what I'm working with. See that? Okay. Now we can do that whole, where's the center? So the eyeball's going to go somewhere about here. And I'm just drawing lightly with the pencil. I'm super not happy with my ability to draw this, but I'm going to keep going anyways. What I want to see is kind of like in proportion, like I want to make sure that things are making sense as far as where they, where they are. And I also want to make sure that this is kind of dark enough for me to actually see it. 
Because once I start getting the paint on there, I'm going to be covering up this stuff. It's going to be like, you're going to be, I'm going to be barely able to see it. And then the other thing I'm going to do is take kind of artistic license with this and instead of painting um, a brown rooster, I'm going to, it's going to kind of have a white base to it and all of the colors will kind of come out. So here's my... Some of those rooster thingies, whatever you call them, like the crown, aren't even going to be. There's a big gloopy mess there. They're not even really going to be on. They're going to kind of go off. This is what's throwing me, is this crown kind of like throws off the way the head is shaped. It's weird. It's kind of different than other birds. Okay, so there's the eyeball and it's and it's black in the middle with a little bit of white and then it's got this big bit that goes kind of around it. Oh, what a mess. All right. We're ready to start painting. I know that's not a lot of detail there, but it's enough to get started. So let's go back to these little trays. And I'm not gonna really use this green one, but I'm not gonna wipe up that paint yet either. So I'm just gonna put that off to the side. And then, yeah, let's use this as my where I test the paints just like I did on the cow. So I think I want to start with white. And the white is going to go all down here. And then this part is going to be a lot of red. It's also kind of good to start with the eyeball. But I think I've done that dark enough that I don't need to do that. So let's just start with some white. This is just like a cheap craft paint. No big whoop. So I just want to do... a real light wash. Or not even a wash, but like... I just want to kind of designate how this is going to be in terms of the shape. And then this will you know, I'm, I will bring it around. Okay. So I almost feel like that head is 
like a whole different animal than all of this birdie. I've never painted a rooster before. Okay, and then I'm also going to bring that white kind of down around the eye where the brown is around this eyeball. So it kind of goes like this. And there's even a little bit of white in there. Now I know like a lot of that green is totally getting covered up. I'm okay with that. Yeah, I just looked at my hair again. It needs to go. I'm not that edgy. <laughs> it's my husband was like, you could dress up, you know, like all rocker chick and come to the to the band and I was like, hmm, I don't think so. I don't think that's happening. Okay. I really need a bigger place for my yucky brushes to go. I think what I will do is take all the brushes that I haven't used yet out and that way the dirty brushes can go into here as I'm using them. Yeah, so that. And just having a place to put your brushes as you're working just gives you um I'll just put my pencils in there too, whoops. So all the stuff is in just this little compartment of where I can get to it. The next thing I really wanna focus on is that eyeball. I think I'm gonna paint it yellow first and then put the, the darker accents on it. So I want kind of a precise brush. I'm gonna use the number two. I think that will work. So I want a golden color. Let's see what we have. Oh, hold on. And back. Okay. So I have permanent yellow. I think I'm going to pick, let's just get the permanent yellow. And then we'll, we're going to add in the burnt sienna. Because there's different levels of that eyeball there. Oh, I heard he had yellow out. Whoops. Oh well. So there's the yellow. So before I get into the yellow, I'm just going to take a little bit of white. I never like to work with any color. I know I just worked with that white all on its own, but that was really just because it's a base. But I never really want to work with any color. Um, Oh, here we go. I almost feel like I have the eyeball too high. Let's just put it right here. I don't like to work with any color straight out the bottle, straight out the trailer. Because, and I am going to cover these up over and over again, but. None of the colors are going to, I just want that to be a nice giant eyeball. Okay. And now I'm just going to add a little of this burnt sienna. And I'm just going to put it right in the same little slot as that yellow and then mix them together in here and then this is kind of what I use this for is just the, the 
testing, the testing it out. I just wanna. I want the eyeball to be a little darker towards the edge than it is in the middle. Come on, eyeball. And I really find, I haven't drawn a rooster before, but I find if you don't get the eyeballs right, nothing else is ever right. <laughs> so you gotta get your eyeballs, you gotta like them. It's important. I just kinda, blendy blendy. in there but oops so on one side of the brush I kind of have the darker color and on the other side of the brush I have the lighter color so I can kind of move in between them Ugh. I had it and I lost it all right it's all right Okay, now I'm going to let that dry. Let's start in with some of this red and pink stuff. So my yellow brush, <laughs> I always want to think to Van Gogh's horror is going over there. I'm <laughs> not cleaning as I go. I don't know if you're supposed to. I just know that I don't. Here's some crimson red. Let's put this over here. And now we're going to want some kind of a medium to small brush again. And the brush hair came out. That's not good. Um, it doesn't have to be all that precise. I want to just kind of lay the base for where that rooster thingy is going to go. You know, the rooster thingy. Okay, this is not the right color. It needs to be... Oh, what do we need? Maybe a little yellow. Then I go, oop. <laughs> Take a little bit of yellow. That didn't... It helped a little. Take a little bit more. Okay, yeah. That's working. So my... This is going to go straight off the page. The canvas. I'm used to doing scrapbooking, so... Page is more what I would say. I'm just going to take that right over the side as I'm doing it. almost feels like um, where the wild things are to me. <laughs> this kind of deal. Do, do, do. And as I go, I'm going to add more colors to these um, areas, but for right now, I just am trying to kind of um, map out what's going to go where. So I'm just kind of putting the backgrounds on each little space. Okay, this is where it gets confusing for me. So it goes down like right up to the beak. is like here and then this is going to come down 
And then it's almost like it goes in this square thing, which I wouldn't have guessed it would have done that. Okay, now let's map out that gizzardy thing. Almost looks like testicles <laughs> coming off of its face. It's kind of gross. But we're just trying to get the shape of them at this point. They're oddly shaped, so they kind of come out and then go. Like this. Ugh. They're kind of disgusting. And there's two of them. So this one comes like this. But then there's a whole nother one. So that one I'm going to use kind of a different color to block it. And let's just use a smaller brush to do that with. So I'll just go to this brush in this kind of darker color. And that's going to go kind of like that's like, I like that color though. I didn't expect to like it, but I do like it. Yeah, it's like a raspberry color. Ooh, that's nice. I just want to go back over there and do that much darker. <laughs> it's yummy. Yeah, I like that. And then we got this goofy thing over here, like that's a, I don't even know what it is, some kind of ear flap, oops, of some sort that kind of goes like, it almost touches that weird thing, but it doesn't quite touch it. Ugh, it's just kind of disgusting looking. I don't know what it is. And then we've got some kind of like redness going around the eyes. It's real it's real weird people. And then it's white next to the eyeball. I guess I could go back to this. It's a little bit easier. And then we just have to kind of nail down that beak. And then, oops, that's not what I wanted to do. After we nail down the beak, then we'll be able to, yuck, not what I wanted to do. Um, <laughs> yeah, there's going to be a lot of strokes going on. But I needed to kind of just designate the space is there. Now beak. Beak, 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 beak. Ugh, I don't even know what color this beak is. <laughs> kind of an orangey color, like, but a light orange. But I think for artistic purposes, I might want it to be kind of a darker color. So this is yellow ochre, which is different than the yellow that I used before. I'm going to use that for the, the beak. And again, I want to just choose kind of a smaller brush, one that has, so I'm going to pick up some white first and then just glue it around with the yellow ochre. And then try to map out how this beak 
is shaped. It is odd. Something like this. Obviously, a lot of definition needs to be put in there. Let's get a smaller brush and then add a little burnt sienna to that ochre. That's so I'm just putting in that same little um, hole. Hold on, I'm going back. Um, and then mixing it up with that, I kind of have a way that I can, I might even want to put, yeah, something even darker in there, like black, lamp black, just a little incy wincy minuscule, come on, that's not working. A tiny bit, so I'm not going to put that in the same hole just because I don't want it to. I tend to have a heavy hand, so I'm just going to keep that separate. So then I can just draw from it. So I just take a tiny bit of it, and that way I can mix it up. And that's going to work better. Better. Yeah. That's so I can just shade it. I'm feeling like it's getting cartoony. Um, but while I have that black out, let's try to fill in some of this eyeball. ever so tiny on the edges. I'm going to put a little spit on there. So I want to kind of just go around the eye Black, but just a little tiny bit. And then, oops, darn it. Okay, then another thing that's going to happen is I'm just going to pick up this pink again with that same black brush that I did. And then its brow actually kind of goes over the eyeball like a little bit like this so his eyeballs sitting all the way in there and then there's a little bit of white in there as well so we need a tiny brush let's try this one bit of white in here. Like a light coating of white. And I want to pick this 
up again. Okay. I think I'm starting to like it okay. Okay. Now, it's sort of like the fun part comes a little bit. Let's add some blue. Oops. So this is ultramarine blue and I have probably like globbed out way too much of it. It's okay. Okay. So I'm going to take the, the blue, grab a little bit of white, grab a little bit of blue, then I'm going to just gloop it around over here and then This is the part where we kind of like suspend reality. And this is where it really gets like playful. <laughs> so it's not, um, you're really going to be able to just play with it and see like, oh, I like that. Oh, I don't like that. You know, you're going to be able to just start to really play and not get too in your head about, oh, is this right? Is this not right? Because you can keep playing with it until you like it. Um, let's go with some kind of um, this color blue, cerulean blue. I'm going to add that because I kind of globbed out more of the ultramarine than I intended. Oops. <clears throat> Boy, that is not coming off. Let's try a different cerulean blue, a cobalt blue, Prussian blue. I really liked that cerulean. I don't know how to get it out of here. I also want to play with magenta. Okay, Ooh, this is... This is like way old. I don't think that's going to work. Of course, I just plopped it right back in there. All right, this is another. All right, this is cobalt. It's lighter than the ultramarine. It smells horrible. So let, let's add a few of those in there. Like, literally, it looks no different. I think what it's going to need. Yeah, it's no. 
smells really bad. What I'm going to need is some yellow in there, I think, just to keep this consistent. I want to go around the edge. Boy, that stinks. I need to weed out my old paints. And acrylic paints really aren't very expensive as compared to like watercolor paints, which is what my grandfather used to use when I was growing up. And I, you know, not that I was paying attention to the price, but I think watercolors are more. Do I like painting cows or roosters better? Oh, cows for sure. I don't feel like I have a good handle on a rooster's personality. <laughs> Whereas I feel like I know cows. You know, like, I feel like I know them better. And I feel like roosters are angrier than cows. Ugh. Do I like it so far? No. Am I going to keep working on it? Yes. I'll be back. Okay, I'm back, and I'm really not liking my rooster. And I really want to get this cerulean blue out. And I know this isn't the way to do it, <laughs> but I'm gonna do it anyways because otherwise it won't come out. So I'm just, yeah, it's all dried up. Let's just see. Oh, it's just sad. It's completely dried up, so we will not be able to use the cerulean blue. How sad. Let me see if I have any other cerulean blue. I don't think that I do. So I was pretty excited about using that color. So I'm going to try to make some of that color. I'm going to put some uh, green. That's probably too much green. And then, can't get that cap back on. And then I'm gonna mix it with some yellow ochre, which I'm gonna mix with some white and some blue until I get that kind of teal color that I'm looking for. Okay, it needs to be much lighter than that like much lighter and much more blue. <laughs> Let's, where did my white go? There. Right, I almost feel like I need to get too much in this one little spot and it's not looking blue yet, so let's add some, where did my blue go? I need some blue. I have cobalt blue. Try to remember what color that was. That was like a medium blue. I 
not as dark as the ultramarine. Ultramarine. Okay. And so a lot of times when I'm doing my scrapbooking videos, yeah, this isn't looking <laughs> what I like I wanted it to at all. It's getting too muddy and I want it to be more vibrant. So blah. Let's try it again over here. I'm going to try that Kermit the Frog green, which is what they're calling emerald green. And then I think instead of mixing it with the cobalt, let's try to mix it with a tiny amount of ultramarine, ultra if I can find it. I don't know where it went. Permanent blue. That might be close enough. No, it's not coming out. I don't know where my ultramarine went. I guess I could just steal it from over here. Let's do that. No. It's like I made the same color. <laughs> not what I intended to do. Okay, let's try this lemon yellow. See how this does. I like that color. They don't like this muddy color I've been making, which is like way too much like the background color for me to want to use it. But I do like this lemon. Color. I think that will be interesting to use. So I'm just going to put this over with my dirty, <laughs> my dirty bits. Okay, I haven't really used the palette knife yet, but. I think this is going to be great for making like things that look like feathers. So I'm kind of just playing with technique at this point. I don't really like this color that I've made at all, but I'm not going to let that bother me too much. Blah. Yeah, I really wanted that other, that other color was kind of dreamy. <laughs> I liked it a lot. Let's put in some, mixing it in with that. burnt, whatever, burnt sienna color, and then just glooping What's nice about this is like if you change your mind, you can really change it quite easily. That's pretty cool. Should I cheat a little? <laughs> Add some uh, watercolors in there? Why not? Somebody in the audience is probably going, no, you can't do that because it just... Oh, these are really dried out. Okay. 
Wow, bummer. Okay, wow. Super dried. try again. I really need like a pin or something to um, maybe an exacto knife. Oops. It came right off in there. That's not good. Was the cow easier? Oh yes. It came. I think I was drinking wine. <laughs> that might have had a little something to do with it. Sorry, I feel like I'm really wasting time now. But I've got to fix this later. Blah. Hmm. Well, I guess I know what to buy next time I'm at the, um, at the, the art store. Let's just try something a little different. So this is mist in kind of the color that I wanted. So I'm just trying to do a little cheat here. Yeah, that's gonna work. Okay, I like that. So let's add a little more white and we'll get some of that nice blue on there. I almost think I could do some of this. The, you know the missing thing we do in um, scrapbooking? I think that could work on this. That could be fun. Let's make some paint here. Yeah, this was the blue I was after. Or it's closer to the blue I was after anyways. Remembering to go down. Bata. I'm feeling a little happier about this now. My uh, tail green chicken. Yeah. Now I'm just working with those wet paints and kind of doing all of those 
fun, fun brush strokes. And here comes my baby. Hello. Two babies. Two babies. Aw, hi, Jessie. Okay, so kids always seem to know when adults, you know, start to entertain themselves. Then they're like, hey, you need to entertain me. <laughs> so she was done. I can't find my ultramarine. How annoying. She was done. I'll try Prussian blue. Let's see how that does. Okay, so I just, like, goofed around some more. I'm not, um, I'm not there yet with loving this. So I'm just basically playing. Until at some point it'll get to be where I'm like, yep, that's, now I like it. But I'm not not there. She said, <laughs> my daughter was like, those look like testicles. I'm like, yeah, I thought the exact same thing. They're not pretty. <laughs> I'm just putting some more white. And my white is really a way for me to just mix colors together easier. Let's see, and I just go back to the brushes that are already kind of dirty, depending on what color. I think I definitely want some more of this blue in here. Yeah, I like that. So I feel like the I'm getting happier with the body, but the face is not quite, it's not there. No, it isn't. Okay, we're getting there though. We are, yes we are.
I haven't even done that magenta yet. And then you can kind of just like experiment too with different, you know, different brush strokes and different, whether how dry your brush is or how wet it is and a little stippling. <laughs> Ugh, Birdie's ugly at this point. And how gloopy or not gloopy you like it. I like it gloopy. I think, I feel like I really need to, um, get a better handle on how to do that better, but it will come. All right, let's steal some of this blue and the red, and I kind of just want a dark color. You know, roosters aren't exactly friendly, are they? <laughs> no, they're not. They're protecting their chickens. So they have a tendency to be a little bit mad and mean. Now I want some darker color to kind of go around that beak. A little bit more with a smaller brush. But I don't want it to be like a, tr a black, you know. So now it's just kind of a mishmash of a bunch of different colors. That's too dark. And this is a pretty dry brush at this point. And that makes them look a little bit meaner. But also, I feel like it needs to be a wetter brush. Oops. Just go around everything. I feel like I just need a little spit on there. Yep, that's what I needed. <laughs> so instead of putting the brush in my mouth, <laughs> I feel like it would kind of be a bad idea. I just kind of licked my finger to get it wet and then got the isn't that a great technique? <gasps> Try it, you'll like it. It kind of works though. It works for the amount of wetness I want. I'm sure I could get the same effect with just some water. But my spit is handy. <laughs> so I'm using it. There's the... And now let's go around the the face balls, the giblets, whatever. I don't know what these things are supposed to be called. They're kind of horrible though. Mm. I'm close to hating it. I really loved my cow. But it, yeah, it just takes some water actually. But I'm not, I don't have the same affinity for this rooster that I did for my cow. I am feeling like I want him to be done.
liked it? No, I don't like it. This is that thing where if you're <laughs> with kids, like, know when to take, <laughs> take it away from them. I think I might have arrived there kind of a while ago. <laughs> and I probably should have stopped. rooster like I love my cow. Not even close. Okay, now I think I kind of want to play a little bit with some of the, um, what we do with in scrapbooking with this kind of stuff. Let me just test it out a little. Um, excuse me. What are you doing? Do you have a stand for this? Yes, I'm making a video right now though. Is that the stand? Um, I have another one. But can you wait just a few minutes? I'm almost done. <sighs> okay. All right. Do I love it? No, hell no. But I think I'm about done with her at this point. And then I will look again at her tomorrow. Him, I guess we'll say. And I might want to touch up some parts, especially this craziness up here. Let's just deal with that a little bit more. The one thing I'm not crazy about with art is like after you're done, then you're not done because you still have to clean up all this mess and the kids want me to help them. Guess what? Film YouTube videos. is not funny? Yep. Everybody wants to be a YouTube sensation. <laughs> They're like, you know you can make money. Like, yeah, you can. <laughs> I actually kind of like this. Alright. Okay. We're calling it done for the day. I'll let you know if I make any more changes to it. That's it for now. Am I thrilled with it? Oh no, not even close. But I think it needs some, uh, oh I know what it needs. It needs a little, like, white thingy on the eye. Yeah. You know, like, the, the light is catching it. Okay, I needed that, and I'm not happy with this beak situation either. Alright, that's a little better. Ugh, 
kind of ugly. <laughs> There's my ugly rooster. Okay, bye-bye. Thanks for watching. I'm Katie Scott, by the way.